Good evening, it's Jeanette here from Far Forest Ceramics. I just wanted to share a small kiln opening with you. Um, I've been working with Mako Stroke and Coat, the small little bottles, just testing and playing around, trying to create a peacock effect. I did some tiles to test them out in this format and then realised I wanted to try all my glazes over 10 different strokes and coats. So I thought, how can I do that? So I decided to make what I'm calling test bar. It basically is an elongated test tile. And I made those and I've scattered all the dots across and then I've done one all with Norse Blue, one with Capri Blue, etc. So that's all I've got in the kiln, but I'm hoping it might give me an indication of what they're looking like. So let's have a look and see. She's lovely and cool. Um, well, when I say lovely and cool, she's 50 degrees centigrade. So let's have a look and see. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow, there's some gorgeous ones in there. Oh, look at some of those. Oh, wow. Well, the test bar's stayed in one place. It hasn't fallen over. I've got a lot of drippage, but I expected that. Oh, yes. Oh, that was nice. Oh, right. So, oh, lovely. So, I'm going to get one out. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Here, this one is Blue Hydrangea. And I've put different coloured dots, so I've literally marked off each section along and I've got a chart that tells me, I'll put that in the notes, what they all are, but I've got different dots across the top of different stroke and coat. Oh, that's really lovely, that's easy to see there, isn't it? It's like then I can look at maybe what two combinations if I wanted to use two different stroke and coat. So that's blue hydrangea with ten different stroke and coats on. Oh, that's an unusual one. So that's Norse blue. Mm. I can see there's some that could look actually really quite nice. I do like the test bar. I guess that looks like lime shower. Mm, some have completely disappeared. Interesting. What else have I got? Three blue to guess. I've got these all written down. Oh, some really lovely effects here. So you can imagine these with obviously the piece, this would be on the edge of a bowl, for example. Very nice. And to guess, winter wood. Let's see the different colours. Mmm, I like in the test bar. It's really helping me to see the variation in the different stroke and coat. I think that's, I think that's um, blue surf. I'll have a look in a second. Oh yes. So I've literally done the lines of flux and then the dots in one colour in each band. That's frosted lemon. That's subtle, isn't it? Oh, I like that. Imagine that on the edge of a piece or edge of a, a mug. Oh, it's really given me a lot of inspiration. I like this format. Oh, very nice. And then I actually had two smaller bars. Only smaller because I ran out of clay. I thought, well, rather than waste it, I'll make some smaller ones. Mm. It looks like Himalayan salt on the base. How lovely are those effects? Really nice. And one more on this level. And it looks like it's stuck. Okay, I don't know why. 
why, so I'm going to have to tap that off. Ancient copper. Wow. They look pretty much the same. <laughs> I don't know, I don't really think that, I don't know. I don't know quite what I think of that one. This is well interesting. I don't know where, where and why that's stuck. I'll have to tap that off afterwards. Okay, need to go down to the next level now. Let's have a look and see. Okay, let's take this shelf off and let's see what's beneath. Oh, we've got one that's had a lot of warpage. <laughs> Definitely got a wonky one going on there. Definitely got this one gone wonky, but fortunately it's not touched. Another one, it looks like it's tipped. But it's still going to give me an effect. This is really, actually, very interesting to see in this format. And at the end of the day, these are tests to give you an idea of how you might glaze a piece. Very matte, that one. Not sure on that one. And that looks like um, birch underneath. These soft, soft, subtles could be quite nice on a peacock effect. Not sure on the hot tamale on the end. Mm, that's quite dramatic, isn't it? Oh, look at the drippage on here. If I close up on that, you see. Wow. There's some really beautiful movement going on in some of these. Quite dri cool. You could imagine that that drip if this cordovan was all the way down a piece and that was on the edge. That could be quite dramatic, couldn't it? Beautiful. Look at this. Oh, I do like that. I think that's my favourite because I can envisage that on a piece. Hmm. Okay. Three and a half more. Oh, that's interesting. I think that's sandstone, I'm guessing. I'll have a... Oh, <laughs> why didn't I just turn it over? <laughs> yes, sandstone. Interesting. Sandstone. Wow. Leather. Ooh. Now, leather's quite a boring glaze on its own, I think, but actually that's giving it quite a lot of life, hasn't it? This is also giving an indication of how much drippage there is. So I did do some thick flux. Wow. Let me just check, what was this? This was, it was birch. Honeycomb. One more long one. Ooh, muddy waters. Now, I don't like muddy waters on its own, but that's provided a nice base. Very multicoloured on there, but look at some of that drippage. Wow. What gorgeous effects are going on there. Oh, look, the black here. Doesn't look very good on these, does it? We've got one little tiny one left. Himalayan salt. Hmm, that looks a bit like a disaster. Hmm, I think that's the only one I'm not overly keen on. Well, that's it. I actually think that is a really successful firing. Um, so much inspiration I'm going to get from these. And I can see just from laid out on the table. These are going to be really good reference guides. I'm happy with those. I'm going to do more of those. Really lovely. Ooh, I'll take some photos and share those at the end of the clip. Thanks for joining me. Bye.